What if Obi-Wan joined Anakin? Please check out the voice actor for this video, I'll leave his YouTube channel and Instagram in the description. Obi-Wan Kenobi hides in Padme's ship as she makes her way to Mustafar. Padme confronts Anakin and asks what he has done and what he is about to do, just for Obi-Wan to stand at the entrance of their ship and stare down Anakin with his menacing glare. This causes Anakin to turn on Padme and accuse her of helping Obi-Wan as he chokes her unconscious. Let her go! Obi-Wan yells, but Anakin does not comply. In the original story, there is no sense of Anakin or Obi-Wan trying to convince either one to join the other. Anakin doesn't try to turn Obi-Wan and vice versa. However, this story is different. You have allowed this dark lord to twist your mind. Brother, this is foolishness. The Jedi were going down a path of ignorance. You were taught to ignore everything you have ever felt. The death of your master and your love are all for what? A life of insignificance? I know you desire more as I do. I am more powerful than the Chancellor. I can overthrow him. Join me, and together we can destroy the Emperor and lead the galaxy down the correct path. Anakin's message hits Obi-Wan in his core. He considers what he is saying and starts to wonder if he's right. Obi-Wan stops his circular walking motion. Anakin, you're all right. Deep down, I have known the Jedi Order's ideals were corrupt. I will join you. But promise me one thing, that Padme will be safe. Anakin nods his head in agreement, and they take Padme back to her ship and set off for Coruscant. First they contact Sidious and Anakin explains that Obi-Wan has joined our side, Master. He will help us achieve our goals. Good, my young apprentice says Palpatine, but this isn't part of his plan. Obi-Wan is a tether to the light side within Anakin, and he must be taken out. Come to me on Coruscant. I sense Yoda is still here on the planet. Palpatine ends the call and the former Jedi jump into hyperspace. Anakin explains to Obi-Wan how to fully engage in the dark side, he must break away from his past. Anakin did this through his raid on the Jedi Temple and tells Obi-Wan he should be the one to slay Yoda to fully engage in the darkness, and Obi-Wan nods in agreement. Break away from the chains the Jedi created around you. They arrive at Palpatine's office, who is in mid-battle with Yoda in the Senate chambers. The two new Sith rush in and leap from the top of the chambers to where the battle is. They land and ignite their blades. Yoda stops and stares down the two, eyes wide open. Obi-Wan. Yoda mutters, before Sidious sends lightning crashing at him. Yoda catches it, but Anakin and Obi-Wan grip Yoda with the force and Palpatine stops his lightning to do the same. Yoda is now floating in the air, struggling to try and escape their grip. Do it Obi-Wan! Anakin yells as Kenobi doesn't hesitate and leaps towards Yoda. Wait! Palpatine yells, but it's no use. Obi-Wan strikes Yoda down midair and the green Jedi Master flops to the floor. Rage fuels Sidious. He wanted to be the one to finish the Grand Master, to signalize the end of the Jedi Order, but that was stolen from him. He looks at Obi-Wan with disgust, but is shocked as Obi-Wan stands over Yoda's body and his eyes turn a deep yellow. Sidious wants to strike down Obi-Wan for what he has stolen from him, but he realizes the sensitivity of the situation. If he strikes down Kenobi, then Anakin will turn on him. All his efforts will be for nothing. He must tread carefully. Kenobi's time will come. Sidious turns to face the other two. This is it. The end of the Jedi. The Sith will rule the galaxy. Anakin and Obi-Wan look back at Sidious and smile. However, there is tension between the two groups. Sidious knows they will not stand by his side when the time comes. They will try to take everything from him. Obi-Wan of course does not trust Sidious and Anakin will attempt to take over as soon as Sidious helps to save Padme. Anakin asks Sidious what needs to be done next, who says he will hold a Senate meeting, broadcasting to all systems of the once Republic to explain the new age of the Empire. Sidious allows Anakin and Obi-Wan to go check up on Padme, in which they do. They get to the hospital and the medical droids tell Anakin that she has begun labor. Surprised, Anakin looks at Obi-Wan in disbelief and says that they should call Sidious right away, but Obi-Wan disagrees and says they can do this together. Anakin is very tense at this moment, 
This is what he has seen in his dreams. He puts his two hands on the rail and stares deeply at Padme. Obi-Wan stands next to him, putting his arm over his shoulder. Your dreams will not come true. We can save her together, if it comes to that. However, Padme's birth is swift and safe. Luke comes out first, followed by Leia. Anakin embraces Padme and apologizes for everything. However, Padme is highly sedated on medication due to the twin pregnancy. Obi-Wan joins them as Anakin holds up Luke with a humongous grin on his face. But then Anakin realizes, Padme did not die. His dreams did not come true, they were wrong. How could this happen? His dreams were right about his mother all those years ago. Why should this be different? But he knew. Palpatine. He turns to Obi-Wan. I never needed Palpatine's help. Padme gave birth successfully. But he said without his help, she would certainly die. He knew of my dreams somehow. No. He placed those dreams in my head to deceive me. Obi-Wan says, It's all a lie. It always has been. Anakin replies, I do thank him for what he's done. He's opened our eyes to the hypocrisy of the Jedi. So for that I will forever be grateful. But we do not need him. It's time to end Lord Sidious. Padme is left in care of the medical droids and the two Darksiders make their way towards the Senate building once again. Sidious is in mid-speech as Anakin and Obi-Wan break through the ceiling and land either side of him on the central platform. Obi-Wan and Anakin ignite their blades and Sidious pulls out a blade from either sleeve, one for each of them. He knows this was coming. The three battle ferociously in the spotlight, in front of the Senate and the whole Republic who this was being broadcast to. Neither side looked to be getting the upper hand until Anakin slashes at Sidious's right hilt to slice the blade in half. To counteract this, he sent lightning gashing at Anakin from his right hand, but he blocked this with his lightsaber. Obi-Wan aggressively attacks Sidious's left. He is using a lot of energy on his right to maintain his lightsaber, causing his left side defenses to weaken. Obi-Wan ducks under one of his strikes, rolls to his left, and as he ascends, slashes right through Sidious's arm. Sidious stumbles back and grabs his left arm with his right. In his rage, he sends lightning at Obi-Wan, whilst Anakin throws his blue blade through the chest of Sidious as the yellow dissipates from his eyes, ending the Sith Lord's life. In the corner of his eye, he can see Palpatine's political party flee and escape while they can. Obi-Wan begins to go after them, but Anakin tells them to let them go. There's nothing they can do. Bail Organa, a friend of the Jedi, makes his way towards Anakin and Obi-Wan. He uses his microphone to explain how the two Jedi have saved the galaxy and stopped the tyranny of Lord Sidious. But before he can finish, Anakin jumps into his cart and slices Bail with his lightsaber, and Anakin gets on the microphone. He is talking to the whole Senate, the whole Republic, who are watching. He explains to the whole galaxy, Sidious was an evil tyrant. Obi-Wan Kenobi and I have saved you from all of this rain. In return, Kenobi and I will continue the Empire together and lead the galaxy to a peaceful and prosperous future. The Senate is dysfunctional and will exist only to carry out their orders to the respected systems. Any system that does not comply will face the full power of the Dark Side and Clone Army. Anakin and Obi-Wan go to check up on Padme and the children, but as they arrive, they see Padme attempting to flee with the children. Obi-Wan uses the force to stop her in her tracks as Anakin walks up towards her in disbelief. Padme explains how she saw the broadcast and that she can't believe what the two have become. Anakin isn't the man she fell in love with. I hate you, she says, as Anakin's heart sinks. Anakin takes back the children and locks Padme away in their house. He won't give up on her yet. Anakin and Obi-Wan continue to lead. The majority of the systems comply and the ones that didn't were completely wiped out. They assume control of the Separatist systems and took over Sidious's plans for the Death Star to begin construction. They spent countless days attempting to find Ahsoka, but she had evaded them for the time being. Anakin and Obi-Wan have neglected the rule of two, and began the Inquisitor program on Mustafar through the manipulation of past Jedi and Temple Guards. Obi-Wan, their better diplomat, spends the majority of his time commanding the Empire, whilst Anakin leads the Inquisitors around the galaxy, executing past Jedi and systems that do not comply with the Empire's demands. There is a hint of a rebellion, but it is largely helpless. Without Bail Organa and his influence and money, it was restricted to individual bands 
on separate systems with no unity, no match for the Inquisitors. The clone army continues production on Kamino, and the whole galaxy is fully under control of Anakin and Obi-Wan. Luke and Leia are trained under the tutelage of Anakin and Obi-Wan. They learn a lot about the dark side from Sidious's connection, and have developed a terrifying force lightning. Anakin visits Padme basically whenever he has time, trying to plead her to join them as Empress, but she always denies it. She has attempted to escape many times, but to no success. Luke and Leia grow up to be fairly terrifying Sith. At 18, they could easily defeat any light side user left, although whether there are any is a mystery. Anakin and Obi-Wan's Inquisitors have done a good job dealing with that. When they turn 18, they are joined by Obi-Wan and Anakin, who commend their strength in the Force and explain how the four of them are unstoppable. The Jedi have been fully defeated and any sign of rebellion stomped out. Anakin explains how they have no need for these Inquisitors, and for the final part of the twins' training, is to raid the fortress Inquisitorius and execute every last Inquisitor. Obi-Wan orders for all the Inquisitors to gather at Fortress Inquisitorius. Anakin and Obi-Wan enter the fortress to see the twelve Inquisitors present. The Grand Inquisitor kneels to address the two Sith, however the Inquisitors can sense that something is wrong. Your final task begins now. Any Inquisitor that survives this purge shall be deemed Sith Lord. Obi-Wan says, as Luke and Leia come rushing behind them, igniting their blades as they rush the Inquisitors. Their speed is unmatched, and they reach the Grand Inquisitor before he can react, Leia slicing his head off with one strike. The remaining 11 ignite their blades at once and engage the young adults. Although it's an 11v2, this is far from a fair fight. Leia's purple force lightning is unlike any seen before and is strong enough to paralyze any Inquisitor, and Luke's brute strength can pierce any attempt at defense. One by one they fall, lightsabers fall to the ground and the cracking of force lightning is too much for any mortal to bear. The job is done. They walk back to Anakin and Obi-Wan and go down on one knee. You have completed your training. Now you are Sith. Obi-Wan bellows out as he and Anakin ignite their blades and knight the new Sith. They return to Coruscant, the dark side has never been stronger. One night, Luke hears a voice in his head who claims to be the embodiment of the dark side. This being asks him to come to Exegol, in which he is eager to comply. Luke believes himself to be chosen by the dark side, the Sithari. Luke takes one of his father's imperial shuttles and goes to Exegol. He lands his ship on a flat terrain, lightning flashing all around him. He exits to see a huge temple, the shape of an upside down pyramid, dark as anything. At the base, a small opening, which must be the entrance. He makes his way inside and hears the same voice as before. Luke, your time has come. Fulfill your destiny. Luke turns a corner to see two beings standing facing him, a male and a female. Skywalker. The unknown male bellows as they walk into the light. A scarred, wrinkly man, no other than Sidious and his granddaughter, Ray Palpatine. Do you know who I am, boy? Sidious says, and how could Luke not? He knew everything about Sidious from his father and Obi-Wan. He feels panicked. He knows he has been tricked. Eighteen long years. The time for my revenge is now. As Sidious ignites his two blades and Rey a double-sided crimson blade, as both their eyes turn a deep yellow. Luke cannot turn away now. Maybe he can defeat and end the Palpatine bloodline here. The three rush together and engage in combat. Luke has never faced anyone, anything like this. No one other than his father has been able to block his strikes before. Luke might be matched for one of them, but not two. Luke, still young, was out of his depth. A flutter of lightning from Sidious freezes Luke for a split second, and Rey takes the opportunity, twirls her blade around her back and through Luke's abdomen. The light leaves the young boy's eyes. Sidious's plan is now set in motion. The death of Luke Skywalker was just the beginning. Anakin, back on Coruscant, can sense that something is wrong. I sense a disturbance in the Force. He claims to Obi-Wan as the monitor in the office begins to beep with an incoming message. Send it through. Says Obi-Wan as Darth Sidious and Rey show up on the screen. Anakin and Obi-Wan stare, speechless. Sidious grins and gives them a moment for this to sink in. Foolish boy. 
You really think you could defeat me? I am Sith, and to prove it. Sidious uses the Force to bring Luke's lifeless body into frame. Another foolish Skywalker that was way too easy to manipulate. I only had to plant a few dreams before he made his way to me on Exegol. He didn't put up much of a fight. I am coming for you, Skywalker. Concludes Sidious as his grin grows even wider. Anakin and Obi-Wan's rage intensifies. Anakin goes to force choke Sidious, but he cuts out the meeting before it could finish. Leia through the force senses something is wrong and enters the office. She asks what has happened, and Kenobi tells her that Sidious has returned and he killed Luke. Leia gasps and looks at her father, who is staring at the ground. His rage is like no other, the dark side flowing through his veins. He has control over it. Sidious will pay for this. I will finish what he started all those years ago. I promise you. The Sith assemble their fleet. A majority of the army's Star Destroyers make their way towards Exegol, and Sidious's army meets them in the dead of space. Both fleets stand off. Anakin is in the command ship, staring directly to where Sidious must be. The silence across space is deafening. The fate of the galaxy is about to be decided. The battle commences. TIE Fighters and X-Wings make their way out of the Star Destroyers from both sides. If I had to estimate, around half a million ships were deployed in a matter of seconds. The sound of blaster fire is like nothing we have heard before. Anakin can sense Sidious's presence, and he knows Sidious can sense the same. Both sides are of even capacity. Anakin knows this battle will not be decided by their armies, but only by themselves in combat. Anakin, Obi-Wan and Leia make their way to Sidious's ship, the three of them the most powerful force users in history. They question why Sidious would dare attack them in the height of their power. He must know that he is no match for Anakin. They make their way to the bridge of Sidious' command ship, slicing down and choking all of his officers and commanders on the way whilst conserving all of their strength. The doors open and facing them are Sidious and Rey. There is no need for any words to be exchanged. Both sides knew what they wanted to accomplish. They all ignite their blades and rush towards each other. Their fight is unlike anything seen before. Sidious and Rey trade blows with all three of the Sith, not focusing on any specific one. Rey's double-sided lightsaber is perfect for fighting multiple opponents and is proving successful. However, Rey is no Sidious, and the darkness and power in Anakin is having an effect on her ability to fight. Anakin's mere presence in the Force is difficult enough to fight as is. The battle begins to lean in favor of the three Sith, with Rey and Sidious' defenses getting a little slower and sloppy. Anakin and Obi-Wan can sense this and become more determined than ever. However, in the periphery, there is a sudden surge in force energy, and out of the corner of their eyes, they notice a gleam of purple appear out of nowhere. Obi-Wan is too slow to act, and the wielder of this purple blade dashes with the force and slices Obi-Wan up his back. Obi-Wan winces in pain and collapses to the floor. Standing over his body is Mace Windu, but it is not totally Mace. He appears all deformed and scarred over his body, tubes connecting different organs with a black liquid flowing in them. The battle stops. Anakin and Leia take a few steps back and Anakin's rage intensifies. Let me introduce you to my new pet, the revived Mace Windu. Although he's not quite like his previous self. Says Sidious, Anakin is astonished. Sidious's cloning and medical procedures are far advanced to anything he has seen or read about before. He must have combined the force with medicine to somewhat revive Mace and fuel him with the dark side. He must have revived his corpse after his death. The dark side is radiating off Mace like nothing he has ever seen or felt before. Anakin realizes he and Leia can't defeat all three of their adversaries. He can tell they are about to strike, but before this, he force pushes Leia out of the control room. Leia looks at her father with wide eyes. She knows what he is doing. I'm ending this, Leia. You know what I have to do. And she knew exactly what he meant, although it would be difficult to carry out the order. Anakin closes the door and locks the remaining three inside. Anakin creates a force bubble and begins to meditate. He knows he cannot defeat Sidious, Rey, and Mace. He begins a dark side ritual that he learned from Sidious' readings. He had planned for something like this to happen. Leia knew what was going to happen by her father's commands, 
so leaves Sidious' ship and the battlefield. She jumps through hyperspace back to Coruscant, but she sheds a tear whilst doing so. Sidious recognizes Anakin's ritual and screams at the Sith. He slashes his force bubble and commands Rey and Mace to do the same, but it's no use. Anakin's head jolts up, his eyes turn dark black and the ritual is successful. A look of fear sweeps across Sidious' face. A huge circle of force energy originates from Anakin's hands, begins small but causes a huge force energy blast that radiates out through space, consuming him, his three enemies and the entire fleet on both sides. He knew Sidious, Rey and Mace could not be defeated by him and Leia in combat. The only way to preserve his bloodline was to sacrifice himself to defeat Sidious but save Leia. Thank you guys for watching, please check out the voice actor in the description, I hope you enjoyed, please leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Hey guys, please check out our discord, link in the description.